look at the survey put out, what are the key elements that we should be focusing on uh, based on the outcome of the survey? Yo, thank you so much. Do you hear me, please? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. So again, good afternoon. Good afternoon to your viewers. Um, so this study was done by myself and then Professor Justice Tankabe. We are all at the University of the Institute of Criminology Faculty of Law of the University of Cambridge. Now, you're talking about the main findings. The main findings are that one, the threats to journalists are multidimensional. It's not only one, and it's not only coming from one source. That's the first major issue. The second major finding is that media personnel face multiple threats to their physical safety and security, ranging from physical attacks threats to their families, and pressures to kill the story. The next major finding is that half of the media practitioners, I'm talking about those who, who responded fully to our um, survey, experienced threats via telephone calls and messages. Now, this was particularly relevant for policing, because you see, like every other country, police are um, constrained by the resources they have. So findings such as this helps you to prioritize your interventions and where you put your resources. Now, that will do two things. One, it gives reassurance to media personnel that they can do what the Constitution wants them to do, that mm. is fearless. Um, and then the second thing is that it gives confidence um, that those who commit um, violence against media personnel will be um, arrested. The second thing is that media personnel operate in fear of criminal victimization. Again, that's the fear. The other one is things that they had experienced. The second one is the fear. The fear is so pervasive and it's worrying. And it's worrying because a fearless um, a media is very critical to the democratic credentials of any country, particularly when it comes to holding um, government officials accountable. Now, let me read something quickly that the GGA president said, and I think it's very instructive. And I read, quote, mm. a free and fearless media is at the heart of every democracy, Indeed. unquote. Now, I think that this, is, this, this tells the story. So if you have a media um, operating in an environment of fear, that is worrying. Well. The last thing that I think that we can talk about from our findings is that the majority of media personnel feel unsafe covering election campaigns, state violence, political corruptions, and then traditional issues that affect traditional authorities. Indeed, which is what I want us to focus on. Uh, the study you conducted was in 2021 and 2023. Would you say that the issues raised in the study are still very, still very real today as we cover this election? Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. You see, one of the things that have driven us to do this research is that apart from the topicality of the issue, we had people um, engaging with the issue with that data, and we thought that we needed a scientific study to prove or unprove what people were saying. And so, yes, the findings are very important. Now, we had the findings based on two waves. There's the first wave, and then there's the second wave. So we have elements of consistency, and then maybe discontinuity. But the interesting thing in the findings is that not only uh, the findings speaking to current issues, apart from elections, mm. it also talks to the broader issues of um, partly security sector reform, where the media is placed front and center in some of the reform, but also making sure that the fourth mm. estate is given an environment where they can operate. without fear. Indeed. I think curiously also from this survey is the fact that even amongst the sample, uh, and perhaps you should tell us your sample size, but even amongst the sample that you, you spoke to and interviewed for the survey, they also indicated how they felt attacked by their own colleagues, covering their own colleagues, particularly those who have political affiliations. What did that tell you? That, is, that, that was fantastic and fascinating for us. So you're interested in the research method and methodology. I don't know whether I can go into it, but the first wave in terms of the research participants, in the first wave, we had 122 media personnel feeling. It's online. We use Quatrix, and then we circulated. DJA was very helpful, particularly Kofi Eboa, in this, the general secretary, in disseminating the, the link. So the first wave, one, two, two. The second wave, 101. The gender dimension was that we have 78.8 male and 17.2 female. We don't know how representative this is because we don't have the data um, of media personnel 
that can tell us that whether our sample mm -hmm. was truly reflective of that size. Um, and then when it comes to experience, the least person or, or the least experienced person was seven months, and the oldest person in terms of the experience in the media space. Okay, so the, the experience ranges from seven months to thirty-two years, Indeed. and the mean is eleven years. Now back to what you talked about. Quickly. I think that almost every media personnel knows that the media room is like a sanctuary where you can share ideas, where you are not afraid to speak your mind, critique others and things like that, and bring up issues that you think are very important. But what our findings show is that even among media personnel, let me read, feelings of safety covering stories about misconduct by fellow media practitioners, almost 50%. Well, those surveys said that they did not feel safe at all or did not feel safe in covering stories about misconduct by fellow media practitioners. And that's very important because we have a Ghanaian well. proverb that says that you are at home or you are in the room, but your leg is outside. In other words, you don't have that protection that you need from fellow media practitioners to discuss issues rigorously and then make sure that nobody goes up to, as you say, in pigeon English. Well, Doc, we, 